Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending upon where you are in the world, and welcome to today's webinar. Taking Crystal and Webby Reports Mobile. Today's webinar is the second in the Mobile BI webinar series, hosted by SAP Insider and presented by Decision First Technologies. I'm Steve Paul and I'm your moderator today. We have just a few announcements before we begin. This webinar is designed to be interactive between you and our presenters. There is no dial-in required and you can listen through your computer speakers or audio is available via call-in numbers as provided. You can participate in our Q&A session by asking questions about the information presented in this webinar at any time. Just type your question into the text box located at the bottom right of our console and then please indicate in capital letters who you are addressing your question to. We will answer as many questions as time permits after our presentation. Later in our program we will ask for your feedback and there is also a survey once you exit the event. Slides will advance automatically throughout the event and if you require a PDF copy of the slides, a link will be sent to you to access the archive version. And at this time we recommend you disable your pop-up blockers. If you're experiencing any technical problems, please visit our webinar help guide by clicking on the help link in the upper right hand corner of our console. And now on to our presentation, Taking Crystal and Webby Reports Mobile. Discussing today's topic will be Chris Hickman, Principal Consultant with Decision First Technologies. We also have Stefan Nikase with Corporate Sales for Decision First Technologies. First, we'll hear from Stefan. Thanks, Steve, and thanks everyone for joining part two of our webinar series. Um, today, we're very excited to show um, how to take um, Crystal and Webby content over to mobile. Um, for those who attended the first session, uh, this will be a, a bit of a repeat, but uh, as many of you are still familiar with, uh, with Decision First Technologies as an organization, we'll go through a brief overview uh, of the company, and then I'll turn it over to Chris um, um, for a demo this time um, as opposed to last week. So uh, Chris, next slide. So uh, Decision First Technology um, is a leading SAP analytics partner. And we're actually, um, for seven years, um, we were um, the partner of the year with SAP, uh, including in 2013. Um, we resell, support, and uh, implement the complete portfolio of business objects products um, and our sole focus uh, as a company is business intelligence and data warehousing with SAP. Um, we've been in business for a decade, well, over a decade, and uh, we've helped over a thousand customers uh, drive business outcomes from their data along the way. Um, one of our great strengths is our people and our consultants are experts in their field and uh, often industry uh, thought leaders. Um, they speak at conferences, uh, they blog, um, they tweet. Um, you can actually follow Chris uh, at the end of the webinar. You'll, you'll find his Twitter handle, handle there. Um, and we have a deep knowledge of all the front end tools um, with business objects, but also uh, we have a leading EIM practice, uh, which means we have a lot of experts um, handling, you know, SAP data integrator, um, the ETL tool, the data quality, uh, and information steward. We, we've done a lot of work with these tools um, and understand the importance of data quality and data governance um, to drive BI success. And one last thing here um, about uh, about the FT is that um, you know we've developed a, a very very close relationship with SAP, and um, that has led us to adopt HANA very early. Um, and we have a, a HANA Center of Excellence here in Atlanta, and we're working with small and big customers um, on use cases for HANA um, to drive, you know, user adoption uh, through HANA like never before. Next slide. I'll talk a little bit about the, the customers we've worked with um, over the years. You know, we've worked with customers of all sizes in different industries. Um, and we don't really have a, an industry focus as a company, um, but over the years, you know, we've, we've worked on a number of use cases for all the industries you can see here um, on this page. Um, I'll give also some more specific example of what we've done um, with mobile with some customers. Uh, 
for confidentiality reasons, the, the name of the customers will remain, uh, you know, unknown. So, uh, for a, a specialty chemical company, um, we've done, we've taken content that was previously in Webby and now is delivered on mobile devices for their sales management team. Um, and what they can see on their mobile devices is, you know, typical sales metrics. So sales, um, sold to breakdown, and some information about their distributors network. Um, for an oil and gas company based in Dallas, we've worked with their finance team um, to deliver their financial statements, which are crystal reports, um, on, on iPad for their executives. And then we've also built a what-if scenario dashboard that shows oil and gas um, sales and volume, and you can you know tweak these values to predict the effect on overall income. And finally, um, kind of also related to what we're going to see today, um, for a large beverage company, um, we've delivered crystal reports um, on mobile devices, but we've also um, added a little bit of ad hoc um, capability on mobile devices by implementing Explorer for them. Um, and uh, I will now turn it over to Chris for um, the demo. Chris? Okay. Thank you, Stefan. Okay. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Chris Hickman. As Stefan said, I'm a principal consultant with Decision First Technologies. And uh, today I want to present to you information on taking Webby and Crystal Reports mobile um, on both iPhones, iPad, or all iPhones, iPads, Android devices, and um, and all of the the features contained within those reports. So we'll start here with an agenda. What are we going to cover in the next hour? Well, why do we want to mobilize our reports? And then I'll give you a quick introduction to mobilization. We'll talk about mobilizing Crystal Reports and then move into Webby Reports. And then what are the features of the mobile application? And then a few takeaways. And then I'll turn it back over to Stefan, uh, where we'll talk about some upcoming events, and then uh, take some questions. And there's also some references that we'll use throughout the presentation. So first of all, why mobilize your reports? Well, it's pretty straightforward. Why do companies need to mobilize reports? And whenever your, your companies are out in the field, whenever your users are out in the field, they necessarily may not want to take out their laptop, depending on where they are. Maybe they're standing on a street corner or sitting at a cafe, and they want to look up quick KPIs to try to figure out the state of their business. They, they're researching a question, but they're not going back to the office. So typically, they can just bring out their, their phone or their tablet and just uh, take a quick look at some reports some KPIs and try to make some decisions without having to bring out the laptop or, heaven forbid, have to go back into the office. Um, Secondly, mobile devices are always on. So mobile devices are known for quick on. Um, if they're in an, an off position, they can come on really quickly. Uh, as opposed to laptops, depending on the speed of your laptop, it can take a few seconds to a few minutes for that to come up. So typically, mobile devices are readily available. And then finally, your data needs are frequently dependent on quick access. You've got to have very fast access to your data. Typically, that's going to happen with the devices that support quick access, which typically are your phones and your mobile devices, your phones and your tablets. So to give you a quick introduction to mobilization as it pertains to SAP business objects, our supported devices, iPad, iPhone, iPod Touch, at iOS 6 and above. And then we've got Android, which includes the phones and tablets, at 2.2 and above, the Android operating system 2.2 and above. And then there's still, um, there's still support for BlackBerry devices as well. So design considerations for size. So think about with the different, uh, the different devices that you've got. A, a phone is going to be much smaller than a, a tablet. So typically, you would want to design for smaller screens. Maybe you want to use some fewer visualizations that have uh, higher impact. You, uh, you also have to consider paging more often. So maybe you can have one column chart per page as opposed to a column chart, a pie chart, and a table on one page on a larger device. Because with those larger screens, you can have more visualizations. And the visualizations that you've got on those larger screens can be similar to your desktop. Obviously, with iPads and I believe 9.7-inch uh, screens, is not going to be as large as your desktop or even as, a, um, as large as your, uh, the monitor sitting on your desktop if, you, if you've got a docking station. So we have to understand the form factor that our users are going uh, to consume the content and design for those form factors. And then mobile content on your desktop. Well, the reports are available on your desktop. 
whenever you design your reports, like we're going to design Crystal Reports and Webby Reports today, we're going to go through the same processes that we always go through to design those reports. We'll use the same applications, and we'll deploy them out and make them available on mobile. But some of the reports can be developed to view on mobile and to, I'm sorry, to view on the desktop, to use on the desktop, but then some may have to be specifically designed for mobile. So a little later on in the presentation, we'll talk about the geospatial capabilities of the mobile devices. And those are the reports that, in that case, are specifically designed for mobile. So first, let's, let's just jump right on into Crystal Report. So Crystal Reports has a WYSIWYG type development style. So what that means is whenever you develop a Crystal Report on, and you view it on your desktop, it'll appear on your mobile device in the same way as you design it on your desktop. That's nice because you know that whenever you look at your report on your mobile device, you know exactly where to go find things. Uh, there's no translation of the report on your mobile device. It's just it's what you see is what you get. So you can still filter that data within your report. So you, whenever you're building your crystal report, you can still put in a query filter to filter the report. And you can, hit the, you can refresh the data at any time just by clicking the refresh button within the mobile application. And then finally, with Crystal Reports, the, the extra step required to take it mobile is to make it a member of the mobile category. Whenever you make it a member of the mobile category, that tells the mobile server that that report is available for consumption for those users who have access on the mobile devices. To mobilize our Webby Reports, now Webby Reports takes the concept of, of WYSIWYG, or what you see is what you get, and uh, adds a second mode. So first of all, our Webby reports, we can develop our Webby reports as we normally do on our desktop. We can export them, basically make them appear on our desktop or on our, our mobile device as a PDF. So you can design your Webby report, and you can, you can set it up to view on your mobile device as a PDF. That's very similar to the way we develop Crystal reports in that the way you lay out your Webby report on your desktop is the same way you'll see it on your mobile device. So, uh, Web Intelligence also has a second mode. It's a, a, a sort of, I guess you could call it a mobile format. In the mobile format, you take your Webby report, you lay out your components in specific order and specific ways on your desktop, and those mobile that the mobile device will then pick up those 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 blocks and change the way that they look so that they're they're more uh, conducive to viewing on mobile devices, whether they're phones or iPads or phones or tablet devices. And it also will reorder those components so that they make, uh, they lay, they're they laid out on the screen and there's a nice flow to those those reports. So, they, But the thing is that you've got to know how you're laying out your reports or how you're laying out your blocks so that they'll show up uh, the way that you intend on the mobile devices. So there's a few design guidelines. I, I always reference the mobile uh, user's guide. So you can always go out to the SAP website, and you can pull down the mobile user's guide that will tell you exactly how you lay out Crystal Reports and how you lay out Webby Reports so that you can take advantage of um, your mobile device in an optimal, optimal way. You can handle geographic capabilities. That's one thing that excites me the most. Um, the geographic capabilities in a Webby Report is something that's unique to our mobile devices. So I'm going to show you in the presentation how we generate maps. And then you can also hyperlink out to other reports. So if you're viewing, say, a summary report, this uh, summary Webby report with KPIs, you can link out to other reports uh, within your business object system and pass data back and forth across those systems or across those reports. And then uh, in Web Intelligence, you deploy them for mobile. Again, you take the Webby report, save it to the repository, make it a member of the mobile category, and those reports would then be available to the business object users on the mobile devices. So we've got some common features. And whenever I talk about common features here, these are common features across using Crystal Reports and Webby Reports on your mobile devices. We have collaboration via Streamwork on the mobile device. So if you download your SAP BI application and you're viewing a Webby or Crystal Report, you can collaborate with your colleagues on that report using the Streamwork social media site. Uh, you've got annotations so that you can draw. You can make comments on a report. You can add notes. You can even. Uh, perform a little voice recording uh, to ask questions. And then you can also crop and you can blur content out on those reports. And then once you've annotated, you've recorded your questions or comments, and you've done your, any cropping and blurring out of your report, you can email that out. And then those, uh, the email includes not only a screenshot of what you've just done, 
And also, if you've recorded your voice, a, a WAV file that's attached to that same email, you also have two hyperlinks, one that will open up in the local browser, and another, and another that would open it up in the BI application if you're opening the email on the mobile device. So you also have information about the, the report that you're looking at. So you have an info uh, option in the mobile application. So you've got some special features that are, are associated only with the report types. Web Intelligence has a subscribe and unsubscribe option. So you can subscribe and unsubscribe to updates to the report. And also, if you apply any conditional formatting, you can subscribe and unsubscribe to see if any of the conditional formatting tests are met. It'll, it'll tell you whether or not those tests are met. You can go view the report. So say you're looking for sales revenue above uh, $1.5 million. If you've applied conditional formatting on the report, you'll get a note in your mobile de device telling you that that condition has been met. Go out and have a look at that report. You also have a full screen mode with Webby Report so that you can take away the, the borders of the SAP BI application and then just view the Webby Report by itself. The Crystal Report application has the ability to generate an offline PDF. So if you're viewing a Crystal Report while you're online, you can download that PDF to your mobile device and then view that PDF offline. So if you know that you're, you've got, a say, an iPad, and the iPad is not 3G or 4G enabled, you can take that, uh, that PDF offline so that you can show that same content while you're disconnected from your network. So designing the reports for mobile. In Crystal Reports, we can use Crystal Reports for Enterprise 4. We can also use Crystal Reports 2013. And this is for the BI, uh, 2013 is for the BI mobile, uh, for the SAP BI 4.1 application. And then the Web Intelligence application, you can use Rich Client and you can use the Rich Internet application. So you can use the same tools that you're familiar with based on the platform that you're running. So in designing a crystal report, what I've laid out here is a, one of the standard crystal reports that's installed with the system. My intention here was to keep this as, as easy to consume as possible. So first of all, we've got a, a comparative income statement that's been developed on the desktop. You, the report was designed. It was deployed to the desktop, so it was designed. In this case, I'm running a BI 4.0 system. I've deployed the application of the report to the repository and then made it available to them in the mobile category so that it can be consumed in the mobile de on the mobile devices. So you can see uh, there's no special consideration other than device size. It would be very difficult to view this on an iPhone. There will be a lot of scrolling, a lot of zooming in and out. So you really have to understand what your users are using to access your, your reports in order to design them for the devices that are that are most often being used. And then what you see is what you get. You can see there in the screenshots at the bottom, the left side is a the business objects platform where I'm just viewing the crystal report and the BI Launchpad. And then the right side there is the same report on my iPad. So you can see the, the header up top and then the footer at the bottom so that you can page through. And so you can see that the report that we've got generated there is the same on the desktop as the mobile device. So Webby reports are a little bit different. Remember, we talked about the, uh, the desktop view, the PDF view of a Webby report. So it's the same way as Crystal. You lay out your reports. You deploy it as a PDF. You view that report on your mobile device. It, it looks the same way on your mobile device as it does on the desktop. But whenever we use the, the mobile view, the, the mobile design view of Webby, we can lay out our blocks in a Webby report so that, they, uh, so that we know how it's going to act on the mobile devices. So what you're looking at here, this is a screenshot from the user's guide that's, that's accessible from the SAP uh, website. So you can see I've got six blocks here. And the six blocks represent things like number one could be a table, number two could be a pie chart, number three could be a column chart, four a line chart, five and six could be pie charts and tables. So the way that we're laying those out, you pay attention to the numbers there. Whenever I flip to the next page, it's going to show you on a mobile device how those are laid out. So one, two, three on the top, four, five, six on the bottom. As it's displayed on the mobile device, in portrait mode, you see that one and two are displayed on the first page, page one, and then number three is displayed on the top of page two. And then on page one, four and five are displayed on the bottom. And then at the bottom of page two, we have number six. So you can see in portrait mode how those reports will be, how those blocks will be laid out in a Webby report uh, in the mobile view. In landscape mode, one, two, and three would show up on the first page. 4, 5, and 6 would show up on the second page. 
So we have to take that into account whenever we're laying out our Webby report so that we know how it's going to appear on the mobile devices. All right, so what I've got here is a Webby report that I developed. And this is one that I typically use in demos. And I, uh, I know there's some groaning about this pie chart. The pie chart is not exactly ideal because there are far too many um, values in that pie chart for it, for it to be effective. But at least we see it's a pie chart. <laughs> so we've got a Webby report just designed with a uh, bar chart, a pie chart, and a column chart at the bottom. And you see here, this is the mobile-enabled format so that we've got the two charts up top and then the one chart there at the bottom. So we know that based on the layout of the report on the Webby on, Webby on the desktop, how it's going to look on the mobile device. So you can see that it's been changed. There's a black background that's changeable. You can also change that to a white background directly inside of the application. And then you can, um, you can then work with the, the objects. You can touch the lines. You can, um, you, you can work with the pie chart. You can double tap them and, bring, and blow them up larger. So with that, in Webby reports, you can also handle blank cells. So you can have blank cells to label parts of your, your application in the mobile format. Uh, conditional formatting, you can receive alerts from the table data. And those conditional formatting, uh, if, you're, if you understand how that works in Webby, it works the same way for mobile. You develop your, your conditional formatting. When you view the objects on the mobile devices, the same coloring appears. But then you can also embed images or items or icons on your screen, like trend icons. I'm going to show you how we can take a standard chart and show a trend icon. We've got some limitations there that I wanted to make sure we understand. Of course, whenever we get into reports, we, uh, we know that a lot of data can slow down your performance. So there are limitations with mobile devices. And there are some guidelines there on tables, line charts. And then you can refer to Report Designer's Guide for more information about other limitations. But those are the primary items that we use are tables and line charts. So stay well within those limitations, and your, your report should run well on your mobile devices. Uh, there's a concept in Webby called scorecards. And whenever we generate those scorecards, we can generate them, say, with, uh, with trend icons, with um, spark lines, column charts, things like that embedded directly inside of our tables. We have to understand that naming our tables are key. You know, If you go into your properties of a table, the way you name that table is important to the mobile device because it picks that up and it understands where items are within that table and what do you want to use to represent data in your report on the mobile device. So we'll talk about naming tables here once we get into our demo. So generating scorecards, uh, there's just some more information there on those scorecards. Naming tables are key. We have to understand that naming those tables are important. We've got, uh, I just got a listing here of all the different charts and icons that we can use. You can see in the user's guide more information about each of those and how to name your charts and how to lay out, or how to name your tables and charts and how to lay out the data in those tables and charts to take advantage of the mobile application. So then we've also had geoanalysis of data within the report, which is very interesting to me because you can embed a latitude and longitude that's associated with each of your records in a table. You name the table. You can embed URLs for further information. And you can view a map directly on your mobile device. And I'm going to show you how to build one of those. Keep in mind that that's for mobile only. Whenever we build these maps on the, on, in Webby, you will not be able to view a map on Webby out of the box. You'll be able to deploy that Webby report with the embedded table. And then the mobile device does the conversion of that Webby table into a map that you can view. So then, of course, with the Webby report, all that said, you can just design the Webby report, deploy it as a PDF. Similar to Crystal with the WYSIWYG format, just a, uh, a static version of your report. Um, static is sort of controversial uh, because you can refresh the report. You can bring the data up in the report. So it's just it's the way you lay it out on your desktop. If you deploy it as a PDF, you'll see it the same way on your, on your mobile device. So let's get into the demonstration. I've got three parts of this demo I want to take you through. And uh, please understand this is a live demo, and we all know how live demos tend to go. So I'm going to jump straight into a, uh, my Crystal Reports application here. I'm going to create a Crystal Report. And I'm just going to use the Report Wizard. I've already laid out a connection here. So with this connection, I'm going to jump straight into my mobile device here. Uh, uh, so we'll just log in here as WinAD. And here I'm going to lay this out as year. 
and you'll note you'll recognize eFashion here. It's just quick and easy in this nice little data set. So I like using eFashion to do these demos. It's very dependable. Um, so I'm going to lay out year, store name, sales revenue. I'm going to go ahead and filter this out on state. And I'm just going to allow an equal to, and I'm going to prompt for a state. And I'm just going to use the same state equal to and select only from the list and pick OK. All right, now I'm going to click OK. And I'm just going to walk through the wizard and let the wizard build my report. So the first thing that I get is state equal to. I'm going to select California and pick OK. All right, so there's my query. I'm going to click Next. So I want to lay out all the fields of my report. I'm going to drop those in, pick Next. And the report fields here, I'm going to go ahead and group by year so that we can see that the standard report uh, is working here. Uh, summarize field is going to uh, summarize the sales revenue by year. And then we have groups that will be sorted. I'm not going to sort on year. I'm just going to leave it. I only have three years. But I am going to insert a pie chart and click Next. And I'm not going to apply any filters. I'm just going to click Next, No Template, and Finish. So here's a quick report. I've got my data in the report. Uh, you can see here at the bottom, I'm sectioned off on year. I've got my individual years here. And then I've got my sales revenue summed up by year. So I can move that over. And I can save this off. So I'm just going to save this to my repository. And I'm going to put this up on uh, my repository. I'm going to call this sales revenue by year and click Save. Now this is saving it off to the, uh, to the application onto the platform. So I'm just going to jump straight into my BOE 4.0 system and go find my report. So I'm going to go into my document and you can see here that I'm running a pre, uh, a, an earlier version of BI 4.0 on the system. So I'm running IE 10 as well. So if we look this up, we've got Let's see, uh, sales revenue by year. So here's our crystal report. I'm going to open that up so that you can see what it looks like. So it looks just like uh, it looks like on the desktop and the through Launchpad, the same way that it does in the crystal op crystal application. So, but right now this is this isn't mobile enabled. I can go into my mobile device. I can log into my BOE 40 system, and I can see that it's not there. What I need to do to take that mobile is to go straight in here. Now let me refresh here, live demo. So I'm going to go straight into the BOE40 system, and I'm going to make that a member of the, uh, of the mobile category. So I'm going to jump straight back into my folders here and go into folders, CH, sales revenue by year. Right click, go to categories, go into corporate categories and mobile, and pick OK. So now we've got that. Uh, Let's see, I'm going to try to pull up my iPad here. And hopefully my uh, air server is working. Let's see. And it appears that my air server is not working, so let me come back into it. There we are. So there's my mobile application. I'm going to log in here with my application password for security. I'm going to log in. OK, I'm already in demo 40. I'm going to pull down to refresh. So you see there that I've got today, I've got two reports, the one that I generated earlier, and then my sales revenue by year. I'm going to tap sales revenue by year. It's going to load up that report on my mobile device. So it's pulling the report directly from my BOE 40 system. I've got my application security so that I've logged in with a password on my application. I've got my platform security so I was forced to log in as myself which I did before I uh, brought up my system. And then the data security is still in place. So I built this on the eFashion universe. So whenever the, the universe is built and you use row level security or column level security, that still holds. So you still have that data in place. And so we'll give this a moment to come up. This BOE 40 system is notorious, or our system is notorious for being slow. So we're replacing it with a BOE 4.1 system that I, I've seen as a whole lot faster. So you can see here that there's the crystal report. And of course, my air server is going to quit on me. So let's come back into it. All right, so there's my crystal report. And go back into the control panel. And my air server just crashed. So 
what I wanted to show you there is you could click refresh and just refresh the application. You can change the prompt and then click done. And let's see if I can get this to come back up. If I bring up Air Server, uh, technical difficulties. And we'll go back into AirPlay and see if that works. There we are. So we're back in there now. So you can see here that I refreshed the report by clicking the refresh at the top right corner. It brings up my prompt. There's my listing of values. I click Massachusetts and click Done. And it updates my report. And you see there that it's given me my Boston Newbury location with my three years. And it's updated my pie chart on the top. So as soon as you make changes to the, web, uh, to the Crystal report on your platform and your application and redeploy it, you always, on the latest version of the SAP BI application, grab the screen, pull it down to refresh, and it'll check for updates on your platform. So you'll always have the latest and greatest. As soon as you make the changes on the platform, it's available on your mobile device. OK? So the next thing I wanted to do was jump into, I'm going to minimize my screen here. I want to jump into a Webby report. So I'm going to go back over to my desktop here. And on my desktop, I'm going to bring up my BOE 4.1 system. And we're going to log in here with single sign-on. Uh, WinAD with single sign-on recognizes who I am. I'm going to build a quick Webby report. And I'm going to deploy this Webby report in two ways. The first way that I'm going to deploy it is using, uh, using PDF format. And you saw that one little pop-up that came up there. That's a Java certificate error. Actually, the 4.1 patch 1 has been released. Uh, that was released yesterday, and that fixes that issue. So if you're running 4.1 and you're getting that issue, go out and look at the service marketplace and try to pull that down, and that should fix that issue. I'm going to build this on a universe. I'm going to open up the eFashion universe on this screen and click Select. And then I'm going to build a very similar to report to the one that we just built in Crystal. So I'm going to pull out year. I'm going to pull out store name. I'm going to pull out, let's just pull out sales revenue. And then I'm also going to filter this on state so we can keep our data sets nice and small. And my values from list, actually I'm going to pick prompt here so that whenever we refresh the report, it's going to prompt me for a state. So I'm going to hit run query. I'm going to select California and hit OK. So now it's pulling the data back. And it's going to represent the data in a chart, as Webby does whenever we lay it out. So I'm going to resize this chart, or this table. So there's all of our data. I'm going to go ahead and build in a pie chart. So I'm going to copy this chart over and pull out store name. I want to convert this to a pie chart. All right. So now I'm seeing for California, I'm seeing all of my, my sales revenue by year. And then I also want to look at my same store data. I'm going to drop in a bar chart here at the bottom, or a column chart. I'm going to pull out my years. And I'm going to convert this to a column chart. All right. So now that I'm laying this out, I would expect it on my mobile device to show up with the table and the pie chart on the top and the column chart here at the bottom. So if I'm going to represent this report as, uh, as it's laid out on the screen here, I want to make sure it's laid out properly. So I'm going to move some things around here. I'm going to move my pie chart over because you see it's overlapping. I don't want it to overlap. I'm going to resize it and move it over. There we are. And now I'll grab this, move it up. I need to resize it a bit more because it's far too large to fit on one page. There we are. OK. So now there's our Webby report. Now I'm going to save this Webby report. And I'll just save it off into my DFT demo. And we'll call this sales revenue by year. And since we call the other one sales revenue by year, we'll call this one Webby. All right, we'll save it. All right, I'm going to navigate back out to my documents and go into my folder, DFT demo. And there's my sales revenue year uh, by year Webby. I'm going to go into, first of all, categories. And remember, make the report a member of the mobile category. Secondly, if you right click, you have this mobile properties option. In 4.1, we now have the ability to show as a PDF. So if I pick show as PDF and pick save and close, now we go back to our mobile device. 
and I'm going to log in here, not demo 40, but I'm going to go into my BOE 41 system. And let me make sure I grab the right system here. BOE 41. Yes, I want to log off. And I'll log in there as myself. Okay. So there's our Webby report. You see it on the top left corner there, uh, sales revenue uh, by year Webby. If I launch that report, there's my Webby report. So you see that I've got a Webby report there. Uh, it's not interactive. You can't touch it and do anything with it at this point. You can just zoom in and zoom out, much like you do with your Crystal report. But you do have the refresh button at the top right corner. So you see that you can change, since we said in list, you can change your selection and pick done there. And it's going to refresh your report and give you that information for that prompt that you've laid out. So that's the, the PDF version, the what you see is what you get version. Now let's convert this over to the mobile formatted version because we know because we know how to develop reports for mobile that this report is laid out optimally for a mobile device. So I'm going to click back here and minimize Air Server. I'm going to go back into my Webby report, the same Webby report, go into mobile properties. I'm going to uncheck display document as PDF and save and close. All right, so that change has been made. I'm going to go back into Air Server. So you can see my screen. I'm going to pull down to refresh my screen and go back into the report. Now you're going to notice a big difference here. The re same report that we worked with in PDF format is now formatted for mobile. So you can go into the report. You can move things around. You can do some analysis on the report. You can touch the bar charts. You can look at the data behind the bar charts. You can even double tap each one and go into a more uh, a larger view of it so that you could do some more focused an, uh, analytics. Click back to go to the whole view. You still have the ability at the top right corner to change your formats or change your filters there. So now we have our same filter. But you see there, I've brought in too much data for it to, uh, to optimally display on one page. So if you look at the bottom there, there's two dots at the bottom. I can swipe to the left, and there's my table. I can swipe back to the right. And give me a second here. I'll reactivate my AirPlay. There we are. OK. So that's the Webby report designed for mobile. So now I'll refresh it. We'll go back to California here. So a couple of things that I wanted to show you was once we go into the Webby report, is some of the, the annotation features. So if you click on the gear icon on the top right corner, you see we have a, a sub-menu item that comes up. My item, subscribe, help, info, collaborate, annotate, email, and full screen. So we talked a little bit about those features before. But what I wanted to show you was the annotation feature. If I click annotate, it's going to give me a page or a dialog that says the orientation is locked while I'm doing my annotation. And then it gives me a little menu bar at the top right corner that has the, gives me the ability to draw, to uh, erase, to write text, to crop, and then to do voice recording. So if I wanted to highlight something, say I wanted to highlight the sales revenue figures, and I then wanted to blur out, say, this data, I click the blur, I click, I click the, um, the window icon at the top. I'll resize my window here. And you see I, I have either blur or crop. I can continually click this to blur it out more and more and more. So if you want to, if you want to obscure a bit of information from something you're going to share out, it's as easy as just blurring it out. And I'll click Done. And then I can click the voice recorder to record something. Uh, but once I click Done here, you see I have two options there. I can email it or I can share it out on Streamwork. So I can, if I click Email here, this is going to bring up an email on my iPad that's going to allow me to specify who it's going to go out to. It gives me a subject. It gives me two hyperlinks and then a screenshot showing me what I just drew. So I can click the first icon, or the first link there and open it up in a browser. And I can click the second one to open it up in the SAP BI application. So I have two options there. I'm just going to click Cancel here because I'm not going to send this to anybody. Uh, but what I am going to do is click back to go back to my screen. And so now I'm live again. I can go back into my analytics and do my same work. So 
that's how you can uh, you can develop a, a Webby report for both PDF, WYSIWYG, and um, and design for mobile. But we also have the ability to add in some scorecarding features. So what I want to do real quick is in the Webby report here. I'm going to go back into my Webby report, and I want to add in in the sales revenue column. I want to add in some conditional formatting so that I can put in some uh, what I call stoplight colors, the red, yellow, green colors based on a range of data. So I'm going to go into analysis, into conditional, and pick new rule. And I'll call this sales rev. And we've got sales revenue is less than, we'll do 750,000. Then the sale contents will show up as red. If I add a second condition, and we'll say sales revenue is between, or actually it says sale content, 750,000 semicolon 120 uh, 1.25 million make sure I have enough zeros there and it looks like I do that's going to show up as I want that to show up as yellow so I'm going to change my formatting here this is standard webby uh, as far as conditional formatting is concerned I'm going to add a third condition that says if cell content is greater or equal to 1.2 million, two five million. We'll show that as green. So we'll change that to green. All right. And we'll click OK. And now there's our scorecard. I can save this and then the coloring that I see on the screen here would show up on my mobile device. But what I want to do, remember we talked about for for reports that are developed uh, for mobile devices, you have some scorecarding capabilities. So what I want to do is add a trend icon that corresponds to that data. Because this turns into something more like a dashboard that you can consume in, on your mobile device. So with a dashboard, you just want to make quick and easy decisions without having to do a lot of analysis. You just want some actionable data that you can work with right now. So what I want to do, if you go off and look in the, uh, look in the user's guide, there's some information on how to name these, these tables. So what I want to do is I want to name these tab this table. I'm going to right click, go to Format Table. To create a scorecard, or to create a trend icon, if I go into the user guide, the user guide is going to tell me that I can start off with the letters SC in all caps. SC means that the table is a scorecard. And then if we put in TT, TT is a, it means trend traffic. So that means that the scorecard is going to include a trend icon. So then you put in C for column. Uh, and then the column number. So the column number corresponds to the column that contains the data that we're going to use to show the trend icon. In this case, column one, column two, column three. So column three will give our score, our uh, our trend icon. And then our last parameter is going to be an R or an L for right or left. Do we want this, the trend icon to show up on the right or the left of the data? Well, in this case, I want to show up on the right. So that's how we name our table for mobile. SCTTC3R, scorecard, trend traffic, column three, show up on the right. So I'm going to click Apply and OK. Notice it doesn't do anything to your Webby report. But I'm going to save this Webby report. And now I'm going to go back over to my mobile device. All right, we still have our same Webby report there. If I click Back, pull down to Refresh, go back into my Webby report, see the change? So it's taken the, the coloring, so if you wouldn't name the report with the SETT name, it would show the, the, let the numbers in red like it does with standard conditional formatting. But because we named the chart according to the mobile formatting rules, we've got the red, yellow, and green scorecarding there. So you can see that the higher numbers over 1.25 million are green. The ones between seven, uh, 750,000 and 1 1.25 million are in red, and otherwise less than 750. Is going to be uh, is going to be in red. Uh, the middle line was yellow. So that's how we lay out a scorecard. So I would I would recommend going back into the user's guide and the report designers, going straight into uh, into the section. You can look up just sc underscore tt. It'll take you straight down into the section, and that'll give you more information about what's possible. All right. So uh, the last thing I wanted to do is show you how to build a a map, and we'll build this really quickly. Uh, so we'll go into our BOE40 system. I'm just going to generate a Webby report. So we'll go into BOE40, log straight in, and let's see, we're already in BOE40 here. 
I'm going to create a Webby report. I uh, always run on the site and just go straight into Webby. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to build a Webby report based on the same eFashion universe, but I'm going to bring in latitude and longitude information that I've embedded inside of my data source. So I'm going to create a new Webby report on a universe, click OK, and it's going to bring up a listing of my universes here. And the universe that I want to use is eFashion SQL right there. Select, uh, hit select there. All right, I'm going to lay out my report. What I want to bring in is city. I want to bring in latitude, longitude, uh, and of course that's not nor that's not uh, usually included in the eFashion universe. I've included that. I've geocoded all the cities here, so we've got the information. Uh, I want to bring in all of my measures here. So I've got four measures I want to bring in. I want to use all of that data in my map. So I've got uh, city, latitude, longitude, discount margin, quantity sold, and sales revenue. And I'm going to click Run Query. Um, let's see. Yeah, I'm not going to filter this out. We'll just leave it. I'm going to run the query. It's going to bring all of my data in. So it's going to pull in a record for every single location you see with latitude and longitude. Now, uh, to name this, you can also go into the user's guide and learn how to name this. But the way that we name it is map. So we start off map underscore. LT, well, LT is latitude. What column contains our latitudes? Well, column 2, LT2, underscore LO. Uh, LO is in column 3. And then the last one is POI, or point of interest. In that case, it's going to be the name of my city. So point of interest, whenever you click an a, a icon on your desktop, it's going to give you the name of the city. So we're going to click, we're going to do POI and click OK. Those are the four required fields for a map. Uh, map, LT, LO, and POI. All right, so I'll click OK. You'll notice here that my report is not a map. It's, it's, it's named a map so that the mobile application will be able to pick it up as a map. I'm going to save this off to my local machine here and go into, we'll call this Sales Revenue Map. Click Save. All right. And now if I go back into my mobile device, and it looks like my mobile device is no longer being a mobile device, so we'll try to turn on sharing again. There we are. All right. I want to go back into my BOE40 system, and we'll pick demo 40. Yes, I want to continue. Um, we'll log in here, make sure I get my password right. Click Connect. All right, so now there's our revenue map. And you can see there, if I pull this down, um, we've got, uh, actually it should be sales revenue map. Let's see here. It should show up there at the top. Oh, my issue is I didn't set it as a mobile enabled report. So it's not showing up there. So let's go in, back into our documents. I'll go back into my directory once this comes up. And CH, sales revenue map. Of course, we need to make it a member of the mobile category. And OK. All right. So now we go back in our mobile application, pull it down. There it is, sales revenue map. If I touch it, it's going to open up the report but it's going to represent the report as a map. So we'll, uh, we'll give it a second to load here. And the idea is we gave it the latitude, longitude, so that the map knows, first of all, pull in the base map. Secondly, plot the points out on the map that correspond to the latitudes and longitudes. Third, with all the rest of the data, those must be measures. So we've got a listing of all of our measures here. So as soon as we pick our different measures, our map updates with the data. So you can see, especially down in the Texas area, how the, the sizes are changing based on the measure. So if I open this up, I can click inside of any of these points, and I can see some information about those. I can keep zooming in, and I see I've got two stores here in Houston. Well, 2.7 million and 2.0 million. So we can see, based on the size alone, which store is doing better. And then, of course, we can change our different measures here and see the different the discounts. So you see that neither store discounts a whole lot, but they all have good margins, quantity sold, 
so we can go back into that. So you can see there how this report is showing up on the desktop as a map or as a, a table. But since we named it with a map underscore and the rest of the parameters, the webby, the mobile application knows to pick it up and generate the map from that data. And by the way, this is not just a US map. Uh, if you zoom all the way out, you can get a global view of the data. So if you have global latitudes and longitudes, it's not just the US, but it's also anywhere in the world that you have data. It just so happens that the fashion data is just in the continental US. All right. So um, I wanted to leave a little bit of time for questions, but um, you can also enhance this a bit more. Here, if we go into uh, each of these individual items, you can add in document references. So you can point to individual column charts and line charts and pie charts and combinations of those. So you can show three different charts whenever you touch a point on the map. And it pops up in a, a dialog and then just lets you go straight through the um, the data, so it's a very uh, very interesting concept, especially whenever we start working with um, with mobile applications and and geography. So it's not something that we know a lot about in business objects, but it's something that's coming, and it's something that's available to you out of the box with business objects mobile. So that's everything that I've got for you today for the demo. Um, there's a lot more that I can show you. I get really excited about things like this, but I think we'll stop there for the demo. So we'll go back over to the presentation and we'll finish up. All right, so we'll maximize this. We'll go down to our slide and we'll do our takeaways. All right, so takeaways. Mobile, first of all, mobile reports can provide great power in the field. You've seen throughout the demos that there's a lot that we can do. We can represent reports as they're on the desktop. We can also create reports that are formatted uh, for the mobile devices themselves, so something that's a little, uh, little more touch friendly. So developing crystal reports is easy. It's just a matter of developing the report, making it a member of the mobile category. But then there's some consideration that needs to be taken for Webby. So consider whether you want the report to show up as it is on the desktop. And if you take that decision, are they going to view the reports on a phone or on a tablet? And then it, uh, you can also develop Webby reports mobile enabled. So you also have to understand your end users and understand how they're going to use your system. So I put a note in there that BI, SAP BI is not yet fully compatible with iOS 7. Uh, there was a note, and I put the SAP note in here about that. I'm sure that we'll follow up with iOS 7. You can see on my mobile device, I'm using iOS 7. The only lag that I've seen or only issue that I've seen is with the annotations. It doesn't follow my finger as quickly as I draw. Geoanalytics are possible in BI Mobile so that you can use some geography uh, out of the box. Just make sure you create your Webby report with the proper name uh, for, the, for the table. Always remember your viewers and their devices. Make sure you understand how your reports are, are going to be used, what your users do with those reports, and, um, and you'll ensure the success of your, your reports and your analytics. And then uh, also rely on the product documentation for official information. So go into the SAP website. I've got some references in here that'll, uh, that show you um, the mobile device product availability matrix, so what's, uh, what's compatible with the system. Uh, product tutorials, sap.com slash learnbi. Uh, if you've not seen that, I would highly recommend going in to look at the learnbi site. There's a lot of interactive tutorials there. Product documentation for mobile, you can go out and have a look at that. Uh, I was hoping to get into our Sharknado social media analysis today because uh, Hillary Bliss did a great breakdown of that, uh, that trending item on Twitter. There was a, a, a show not too long ago about Sharknado, and I was hoping to show the tweets as they relate to maps uh, in a Webby report, but I didn't quite have time to get around to that. But there's a URL there. You can go look at her, her social media analysis using predictive analytics. So now I'm going to turn it back over to Stefan uh, to wrap us up. And Stefan? Thanks, Chris. Yeah, that was an awesome demo. Uh, you can really see how you know all of this would would uh, open BI to a whole new category of, of users. That's really good. Um, so we're running out of time here, but uh, before we conclude the the webinar uh, with the Q and A, I would like to share some of the the things we might be able to help you with. Um, you know, to to start your mobile BI project. And uh, actually, as part of this webinar, um, we'll be reaching out to you. You know, with with um, an email or phone call within the next few days and to share some additional tips and, and kind of understand what you're doing uh, with mobile uh, since you attended this webinar here. 
Um, so one of the things that, that's key with, with what we saw today is make sure that you're licensed uh, for mobile. And, and some people here might be licensed and some other might not. Um, and we can definitely sit down with you and kind of understand uh, where you're at with licensing. We've actually done, you know, dozens and dozens of, uh, of conversions with customers to just get them to um, the right licensing model uh, to fit their, their needs. Um, so yeah, really big highlight here. This is you know included in some licensing, and, and, and sometimes it's not. And the other thing we can help you with is kind of understand uh, which reports or w what what content you've already developed is is good uh, and ready to go for for mobile, and uh, which is not. Um, so that's really applicable for for dashboards and and web. Um, so that's that's included. So something we do with like a, a readiness assessment um, for mobile. Um, and one final slide, uh, Chris, if you want to advance uh, before we move on to, um, to the Q&A, is uh, just to let you know that uh, on the next two Thursdays um, at 2 p.m. Eastern and 11 Pacific, we'll have um, additional uh, webinars on, on, on Mobile BI. Uh, on October 3rd, you'll be able to see uh, one around dashboards, and on the 10th, uh, another one about Explorer and Lumira. And uh, now I think we'll open the line. I'll turn it back over to Steve for the Q&A. OK, thanks, gentlemen. Uh, let's see if we can uh, get a few questions in here in the last couple of minutes. I'll start off with a question from, uh, from Alan. Uh, he wanted to know, are there plans to support Windows mobile devices? That's a great question. Uh, that's one I've been wondering myself, because I've always been a, a fan of Microsoft. Um, from what I'm hearing, there are, there are plans in the works for the Windows mobile devices, but right now it's only Android and uh, iOS, Android, Apple, and then some uh, BlackBerry device, some BlackBerry support. So right now there is no Windows support, but I've heard that there is, or there is some coming. Okay. Uh, Christian has a question. Uh, he'd like to know the name of the app in the, uh, in the iPad. Yeah, so on the iPad, the, the name of the app is SAPBI. Um, you can go to the, the Google Store, or you can go to the, uh, the App Store on uh, your Apple device, or you can go to the Google Play Store and download it. It's just called SAP space BI. OK, uh, Senecar wants to know, uh, would it be possible to report multiple measures in a map at the same time, such as margin and discount, for example? Yeah, at BI 4.0, there is no, uh, there isn't a way to do that right now. So right now, you can only report on a single measure at a time. But I've been reading at BI 4.1, they're providing the ability to report on multiple. So uh, go out and have a look at the product documentation at BI 4.1 and have a look at that because uh, I've heard that's coming. Okay, and uh, Philip wants to know: uh, Is there a possibility to show maps in Webby itself? Yeah, mode. that's <laughs> that's a question I wish I could say yes to, but out of the box, no. Uh, there, the out of the box, the maps are only available on the mobile device, not back on the Webby device. Showing maps inside of a Webby report would require a third-party tool. Okay, well, um, let's see. One more. How about from Bipin? Uh, do you plan to have a pres presentation on BI Workspace in the future? Well, I think that would be a question for Amanda. We, that's certainly something we could talk about. Um, we haven't discussed that at the present time, though. OK, well, thank you. Unfortunately, that's all the time we're going to have for today's live session and Q&A. So if we didn't get to your question during this live broadcast, uh, someone will follow up with you over the next few business days. Just want to remind our audience also, there is a feedback form survey that's opening on your desktop at the conclusion of our webinar. And we want to thank everyone for attending today's webinar, Taking Crystal and Webby Reports Mobile, hosted by SAP Insider and presented by Decision First Technologies. Shortly after this live event, we'll send you an email reminder to access this presentation on demand, as well as a link to download a copy of, of the slides. And on behalf of our guests, Chris Hickman, Principal Consultant with Decision First Technologies, and Stefan Nikes with corporate sales for Decision First Technologies. We want to thank you for your time.